Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Mortal Kombat 1 Online. This is the series where I attempt to eventually cover every single MK1 character on the base roster and the DLCs, take them into training mode, figure out what's good about them, what's not so good, give you maybe some tips and tricks, cameo suggestions, and then go online with them for a couple of games. Today in this episode we are actually covering a character that I do know how to use and I didn't just like jump in and start learning them the day I started recording and that character is Havoc. Now I think it's safe to say that when the game first came out everybody basically said that Havoc is the worst character in the game. He was thought to be by many to be absolutely bottom tier. However, it turns out that this is actually a fairly good character. Uh, it just took a little bit of exploration and figuring out uh, what he does because he is a very, very unorthodox character. In fact, he's probably one of the most unique characters on the roster. He plays like completely differently to anybody else. Uh, he has a very different game plan and you know, he's one of those characters where if you can get his game plan going, you are going to be doing some damage and you're going to be super like frustrating to your opponent. However, in some matchups where he cannot get his game plan going and he gets pressured, uh, he really does struggle. So I think this character is good. I don't think he is as good as some people have him. Some people have him in like A tier, just below the top tiers. There is, in my mind, zero chance he's that good. Uh, I think just like people figured out what's good about him, people are eventually going to figure out how to counter him because just like he takes sort of like a unique game plan and a unique style of play, he probably also has unique ways of countering him. So yeah, still overall really good. I do recommend checking out this character because uh, you do have to play like very solidly with him. So again, he's a little bit different to anybody else in the cast. So yeah, let's go over what Havoc does well. Well, first of all, Havoc has some excellent strings. He is very good in terms of his frame data. He has a lot of plus frames, so that was plus three. This is minus five. He has this ridiculous string. This string is insane. It's quite slow on startup, but look at the distance. Like, just look at it. This is one of the things that makes a character great in my view. Uh, having a forward advancing, multi-hitting mid-string, it just takes you to the next level and Havoc has it. He has, in fact, one of the best strings in the game. I think this is up there. Uh, it is interruptible, but it is not as interruptible as some of the moves that like, you know, I showed in the previous Netara episode where she has like some highs which are sort of more easy to react to. This is difficult to react to. He can also go into two enders based off of this. This is a throw. This throw is duckable, but he can also go into this. And with this low, once opponents start looking for the grab, you can just like really, really annoy them with this low. You'll just be like constantly going for it. They'll constantly get hit. And then they start blocking low. What do you do? You go for the throw. Havoc also strangely has some decent zoning. Uh, now he isn't a zoner, but he does have a suite of projectiles that he can just like throw out. And the one that's worth mentioning is this one. This one takes a ton of time to set up, but it actually launches for a full combo. If you're not full screen, but you're a bit closer, you can actually uh, turn this into a full combo. This character also can hit hard. He doesn't do like the highest damage. You're not gonna see Netara, Baraka, Scorpion levels of damage, but this character's damage does add up. He has a couple of moves which on counter just deal incredible amounts of damage. Uh, this in particular, it like takes a full combo's worth of damage. This is the EX like arm he does. And he also has very good pokes. Uh, this poke is absolutely godlike. Look at the range. He has this move, this is his sweep, look at the range, he has this, I mean the range is insane, you can turn it into a full combo. So this character does actually have some sauce. What he doesn't really have is a lot of mix-ups. He has overheads and lows, but they're built into his strings. He doesn't really have overhead and low starters, so you do need to be sort of mindful of that. But he doesn't need it, because this mid is your main tool. I mean, this mid is just basically everything you need for his game plan. 
And like I said, he has a very unorthodox playstyle. Essentially, a lot of what Havoc focuses on is, first of all, he does have damage. I'll show a couple of sort of examples of what he can do. So it does have damage, that's 342, that's decent, and this combo route you can basically do with anything. Um, I will just sort of go on a tangent here and say that uh, you do need a cameo that has a freeze, so a lot of people use Serena with him, which works. I prefer Sub-Zero and I'll show you why, but you do need a cameo that does do like a freeze. He has pretty pathetic damage if you don't use such a cameo. So do keep that in mind. Um, he can go for... I don't even know what he can go for if you don't use a cameo with this type of move. I always just do, but he has pretty piss poor damage uh, if you don't use a cameo with a freeze. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the combo damage. So his combo routes and combo damage do sort of add up. Uh, you can sort of build up with going for the same combo and using your strings and just like pressuring your opponent, but... Probably the best part of Havoc is this move. This move is absolutely insane. If you don't know what this is, this EX roll, it gets like this little buff on him, I mean the opponent, this little tongue. And once that's on, Havoc can do this. Now you might have seen that that move was unblockable. When I mean unblockable, it literally is unblockable. There is nothing the opponent can do outside of if they hit Havoc, it does go away if you do that, or if they very strategically within like the millisecond use an armored move. So this move is just insane. It does take two bars. Uh, we'll talk about the weaknesses in a little bit, but it does take two bars. But once you get this on, it's essentially checkmate for your opponent. Uh, and then you can go into your combo and rinse and repeat. So when I say that Havoc does do a lot of damage. What I mean by that is that it just sort of adds up. Individual combos aren't going to be doing that much, but you do something, you go into this, so that almost dealt, that dealt 316. You go into this, just showing you like a very basic, I dropped it at the end, but you saw that dealt an extra 200. So add that to the 300, you are already dealing within the 500 territory in terms of damage. And, you know, Havoc can basically pull this off at any time. Go into the double roll if you have the meter, and then it's checkmate. Of course, what you can also do is not pop it, and then wait for your opponent to make a mistake. That's also a fairly common thing. So there is just a lot of application to this move in particular. All right. So that's basically what Havoc does well, but I do have to say, like I said at the start, this character does have some glaring weaknesses. Um, he, like I said, isn't, I think, as strong as people say, but he's pretty good in the right hands. So what are his weaknesses? First of all, there's his meter use. Uh, Havoc is incredibly meter intensive. You basically need meter to do most things. It is the only thing that leads to his strongest setup, so you do need to spend a lot of bar if you want the good stuff. That, of course, similarly to what we covered with Netara in the previous episode, that, of course, does mean that you do not have breakers available as much as you do with other characters. Now, the good thing about Havoc is, unlike Netara, Havoc does actually have very high HP. So I think he's tied with uh, General Shao with having the highest HP. Plus, if you take the Sub-Zero cameo, you do get extra HP on top of that. So, he does have a lot of HP, but you are not going to be getting a lot of the, uh, breakers. Like I mentioned, Havoc also doesn't have a lot of built-in mix-ups aside from this. And this doesn't deal a lot of damage. What a lot of players do is just take the low, and they can do that for a long time because... It just deals so little damage, so you do need to sort of use your mids, mids very well to open up your opponents. Um, and that's the thing, this character does take specialist knowledge. I think this isn't one of those characters you can just pick up and play, you do need to learn his very specific things and very specific way of playing. So that might be a disadvantage, that might be an advantage depending on whether you want to dedicate to this character. And finally, the last thing, 
this character is abysmal defensively. Um, he has this move. This move I didn't show because to me this is one of the most useless moves uh, in the entire arsenal uh, of the cast. This little spin move. You would think that this would be Havoc's armor move. It's not. This is basically a very shitty combo ender. Uh, I barely use this move uh, because it's very slow on startup. It actually drops quite a bit from normal combos if you don't have the proper height and it doesn't deal a lot of damage. Uh, the EX version is completely useless outside of some very specific circumstances where you're looking to chip your opponent but even then uh, it's not the best. Havoc's actual armor move is this. Now this move is good because it has like I think three or four hits of armor but I mean just look at the speed. The speed on this is abysmal. Unless your opponent is literally asleep at the will, they are not going to be hit by this. They're going to either armor break it or they're going to block it. So you do have to be careful with this move. It's your only defensive option and it's not a very good one. So that's one of the things. A good player will be able to pin this character down and then you are going to be struggling. But still, what I like about this character and the reason I play him is that he's just fun. Uh, he's very unique and he's very rarely played. So you do have the advantage of confusing your opponent as well. So that's basically an overview of Havoc. If you like the weird characters, go for him. He's definitely up there with the weirdest, as he's always been. Oh yeah, I didn't mention the cameos, but I think it's obvious. Uh, I'm using Sub-Zero. I think Sub-Zero is easily the best cameo for him. Not just because of the freeze, but also because of this. Uh, Havoc's zoning is quite slow, but having the ice armor, it just allows you to actually get your zoning going. And once you get that going, it can become quite annoying for your opponent to deal with. So I really recommend Sub-Zero, but Frost works. Like I said, Serena works, but to me, this is easily the cameo of choice. All right, let's go ahead and jump online because damn, the music on this stage is crazy. I know it's like messing with the vibes a little bit. So let's go online. All right, we have Wi-Fi boys, but that's not like the most surprising thing. Liu Kang, yeah. I'm seeing this combo. I don't know who started using this combo, but um, the Liu Kang, oops, input error. The Liu Kang Kung Lao combo is all over the place. Uh, usually that kind of stuff happens when somebody like a YouTuber or someone starts using a combo. Definitely not Sonic Fox because I never seen him use Liu Kang. Should have gone for the combo. I dropped it. I'm gonna go for the setup. No, he broke. That hit? I wonder if he's gonna... No, he, he fell for it. This guy's got like the sh movement, so... I'm just being careful with him. Do you see the chip, chip damage that does? Nice. This is going to be a slow one. <laughs> so he is pretty good defensively. Uh, let's get this up. Nice anti-air. Jesus. I'll take a combo. Like I said, the good thing about this character is you have HP to work with. A little bit more. You have a little bit more HP to work with than with like Natara, which is... Oh. Yeah, this is why people are using this combo. Alright. You have the throw combos, which is kind of crazy with Kung Lao.
Oops. All good. All good. GG's. See, that's why I'm... This is what I'm talking about. You might be, like, sacrificing temporary damage by not going for the... Like, the full combo damage. You're going for the reset with the tongue. But it adds up, and it actually works always, almost always, to your advantage. Come on, why do I keep dropping that? Set up. Oh, that missed? See that? That thing has like some crazy amounts of armor on it. That is gonna hurt. But that's why I'm talking about like... A lot of players will just like take it and just like block. Nice break. Oh, it didn't trigger. <sighs> Damn it. I was like this close to getting that throw. GG's. Liu Kang's movement is insane. Uh, this is one of those just back away characters. I mean, Liu Kang is definitely on. Hated those types in MK11 too. That game was like full of that character archetype where like half the cast seemed to just like constantly walk away from you that was the tactic oh my god damn it that that walk is movement speed is crazy yeah all right ggs this is going to be a lengthy one i can already tell Seems like we're pretty evenly matched. It was an interesting starting choice, I gotta say. See, this is this is why that reversal sucks. Ah, throw combos, man, are just quite something. How does he get so many flawless blocks? Jesus, that movement is insane. That this character has, it's insane. Jesus. He's just, yeah, he's gonna break. It's an overhead. Maybe he doesn't know that that's an overhead. Yeah, that's... It's... Liu Kang, man, like... He's like his MK11 counterpart. Mad annoying. Not as annoying as, in, as he was in that game. God, Liu Kang was awful in MK11. But this is... This is rough. 
This is really rough. I'm gonna try like I'm I'm just thinking of what I could do, but this guy's movement is just so good that I just can't get around it. I should have seen that start coming. Alright. I'm just gonna take the damage. Ah, I dropped it. Cool. Getting a steamroll here. That was completely accidental. That, that movement is crazy. Liu Kang is just too good, man. just like walks out of everything you do all right he nearly came back that's the crazy part yeah he doesn't know that's an overhead gonna take the grab take the consistent damage and I'm gonna take the consistent damage again he messed up I went for the armor all right down to last game let's see how we do here I I honestly thought it froze for a second all right cool 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 this game does have a habit of doing that, so you do need to be just like watching out for that. This is good. Like, first of all, this is not Baraka and Cyrax. Um, I don't mind fighting anyone in this game if it's not Baraka and Cyrax. Like, genuinely. Um... So the fact that this is not that, I'm already happy about. He's really, he practiced that. So he has the... He has the Havoc matchup knowledge. Because like, that's... You know, that trips people up, that projectile, because it moves in like an unusual way. He doesn't know that that's an overhead though, so... got that not going for him and he should be done cool I just need to like finish this I I hate when it goes down to last game last round nice good start yeah I was expecting that I managed to get a trip guard. Turn this tactic back on him. That's gonna be a... He dropped it. Nice. Oh. Okay, he's panicking a little bit. I'm panicking a little bit too. Did he? GG's. Absolutely. Like really GG's. Uh, that was super fun. I don't know what hit him. I don't think that was Chip. I think he tried doing something. GG's. That was really good. Super fun. 
All right, so that's basically what Havoc does. Um, just sort of as a demonstration. Let's go ahead and try finding another game. All right, Reiko. Man, I gotta say, it really is incredible how everybody is on fucking Wi-Fi in this game. It's, it's, it's just crazy. Um, I know I say it in every one of these videos, but, you know, it's just kind of shocking. Uh, the Wi-Fi-ness is just out of control in this game. So these are the two, like, brawler characters, uh, for sure. It really is, like, depending on the outfit, like, fucking difficult to distinguish between these two, that's for sure. Um, yeah, I got this is why you want that Sub-Zero cameo, boy. Keep dropping my combos. It's not good. There we go. Should be death. Nice. Pull it back from the brink. That was not what I wanted, but damn did it work out. Hey! He pressed the button. That's all good for me. Interesting choice for Serena uh, with Reiko. I thought that everybody went with uh, what you call it. Darius. Because Darius, of course, allows you to combo off of the command grab. I've been practicing that, by the way. To level up my Reiko. Um, it's not as difficult as you would think. There's a trick to it. But man, just looking at this, distinguishing, like, this is okay because he's using a lighter color scheme for his Reiko, but sometimes, if we're both red, which is this, both of these color characters' default colors, I can't even talk, uh, it really would get kind of awful because both of them do the fucking like Roman hat game. They got that going, like the Centurion stuff. So, yeah. It's still crazy to me why this character has such good zoning. I just don't understand it. Interesting choice not to break. I don't know why. Maybe he didn't want to spend all his meter, but... Eh. Fine by me. Okay. character does isn't it crazy like he literally can zone better than rain can <laughs> in terms of like a straight projectile great game and poor K that's the question okay he's turning up the zoning I think that's gonna be his should I go for the setup I'll go for the setup I was gonna say he's gonna wake up I should have made the... I should have made the read. Um, he, he wakes up very frequently. Nice spacing. Wasn't ready for that to hit.
I wasn't ready for him to commit to the... Alright, that should be... That should be it. It's not it. That's it. Alright. He doesn't have the knowledge that the previous Liu Kang had in terms of avoiding the... The weird projectile. The floaty one, so... Got that going for me. Yeah, Reiko is... This is what exactly what I do with Reiko as well. I, I go for a few more command grabs, because... What the fuck, man? Do you see... Does that, like, automatically remove... That can be the case, right? I have a good poke as well. That was an input error, but... It's an input error that worked out, you know. And that's... I don't really care about that. Should've gone for the roll. Oh, just go for that? Alright. That was a bad move. As in him getting hit by that. Alright. Buff up. Yeah, the EX one does just straight up break it. But see, that's the advantage of hitting or trading with the, the weird projectile. I don't know what the move is called. Uh, I just call it the weird projectile. That... It pops them into the air, so even if you trade... It, they'll be in the air and you can go in and get a couple of dashes in. Go for this as well. Set this up. He's definitely gonna wake up. And I'm definitely gonna drop the combo like an idiot. Ouch. GG's, what's the finisher? Oh, this is a disgusting fatality. I'll have to blur it anyways, but... You guys know what's, like, happening here. Good. That was actually really fun. We got two good games. There was not a Baraka Cyrax in sight, so we can only be happy about that. Uh, plus, we had some good opponents. Both of these guys were decent. Cool. And with that, we are going to wrap up another episode of MK1 Online covering Havoc. Yeah, like I said, I, I do play Havoc uh, quite often, so this was one of the characters that I knew that I was going to have fun with and the character I knew I was gonna be pretty okay with because like I said I do have the muscle memory that's the thing about doing this series is that you know there are some characters that just like naturally do not sort of gel with me how I play and sort of what I'm looking for in a character so there are going to be episodes where I just basically struggle a little bit more than in others uh, the Nitara one was okay uh, obviously this character, but I struggled in the ones like Ashra and all that and I'm kind of dreading characters like Kitana and Tanya and all that because I tried some of those characters out and they just like do not appeal to me. But you know, I said I would give a shot to every character and I'm sticking to that. So until then, if you did enjoy this episode of MK1 Online, do give this video a like and yeah, I'll catch all of you next time. Peace out and goodbye.